Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the Starhead Estate in Starton. It's about two and a half miles northwest of Mere in Wiltshire and 25 miles west of Salisbury and 23 miles northeast of Yeovil. And we're going to be walking a roughly six mile route around the estate. We'll be passing by Starhead House and we'll see the lakes from a distance. We'll be exploring an Iron Age hill fort, visiting the iconic King Alfred's Tower. We'll be seeing an obelisk and hopefully come across the source of the River Star itself. Now I'm filming in the middle of June. It is a glorious sunny day, hardly a cloud in the sky. It's predicted to get quite warm today, so we're going to be very careful. We've got plenty of water for both myself and Logan, and we're going to try and keep in the shade as much as we can. We're going to take it easy today, but should be perfect conditions for walking. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the National Trust car park at Star Head. I think it's four pounds all day for non-members. Most people that uh, visit here also come and have a look at Starhead House and the gardens and there's an extra cost to look at those. But we're going to initially head around the estate which is all free. Well there's a handy little map here so there's uh, the National Trust car park. So we're going to make our way uh, down along this little road here, look at a few things and then head out into the countryside along that route there. This sort of area here is part of the Starhead Gardens, so you have to pay to go in there. I am a National Trust member, so we'll see how we get on with the walk. It's going to be quite a hot day today. If we've got enough time, I might have a little look around there at the end of the video. I'll tell you what, that sun is quite glorious already. Now, the Starhead Estate covers some 2,650 acres and the land was owned by the Starton family from around about the 13th century to 1714, at which point it was sold to a chap called Sir Thomas Mears. Now he only held it for about three years before it was bought in 1717 by Sir Henry Hoare I, who was the son of Sir Richard Hoare, who in turn founded Hoare's Bank, uh, C. Hoare & Co, I think is the proper name, I think they're still the oldest privately owned bank in the UK, I'm not sure. Anyway, Sir Henry soon demolished the existing manor house here, Starton Castle, and built Starhead House, and we'll see that at the end of our walk. His son, also called Henry, Sir Henry Hall II, went on to establish the incredible gardens and lakes, and we will see bits of it on our walk. But the bulk of the estate was acquired by the National Trust in 1946. There is some area of land, uh, the Starhead Western Estate, I think, that's still owned by the Hall family. I think Nick Hall, not sure. About 496 acres at least. Much of that is woodland. And this is the Spread Eagle Inn. Now it shows on a 1901 map as Starton Inn, and it is a late 18th century building. And I was reading that the names of actor David Niven and his wife are etched on one of the windows here. Um, apparently he was stationed here in the war when Starhead was used by various land forces. Well, this rather magnificent structure is the Bristol High Cross and it's made of limestone. It's a market cross with eight statues and, uh, well, it originally stood at Bristol Central Crossroads and had been there since 1373. The upper four statues were added in 1663 and it commemorated the granting of a charter by Edward III to make Bristol a county separate from Somerset and Gloucestershire. But it became an obstruction to traffic so it was taken down in 1733 and stored in the Bristol Guild Hall and re-erected in 1736 on the College Green by Bristol Cathedral. But after another 26 years or so, it was once again considered an obstruction and so was removed in 1762. It was then given to Henry Hoare, who knew the Dean of the Cathedral, and he brought it all back here and erected it here at Starhead in 1764. Now, there are four statues on the second stage. I think it's King John, 
uh, Henry III, Edward III and Edward IV. And the four statues on the third stage, you've got Henry VI, Elizabeth I, James I and Charles I. And four of the statues were replaced by replicas in 1980 with the originals now permanently on loan at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Well, it really is quite beautiful here. I say that's the, the entrance to the, the gardens there that um, if you're not a National Trust member, you uh, have to pay to go in. And this is St Peter's Church. It uh, consists of a nave, chancel, and a west town. It dates from about 1291. The north aisle was added in the 15th century and a south aisle built in 1848. It's also got a north chapel and a porch. There was a big restoration in 1877. I think it's got six bells. Let's have a little look inside. In we go. Oh, it's lovely and cool in here. Just down in front of me here is the, uh, the font. Oh, the uh, bell tower to my right. And there's quite a number of what looks like um, memorials to various members of the Hall family, which I'll put up on screen for you. Rather well, magnificent pulpit on my left and uh, organ on my right. Beautiful um, wooden panels on the ceiling and then just to my left here there's a, a, a little area with a little fireplace. I wonder if that was for the Hall family. I don't know. Now interesting, just looking down here, it's difficult to see because the area is sort of roped off, but a couple of effigies, I think one of Lady Starton, who died in 1403, and the altar tomb of William Starton, the fifth Baron Starton. It's interesting, just looking down underneath the coat of arms of the Starton family, it's got what looks like six little water fountains on the left hand side of the shield there. Bear that in mind, uh, we might be discussing that a little bit later on. I think uh, the Baron Starton peerage is still going, they might be on something like the 25th Baron now, I'm not 100% sure. This is a rather spooky looking arch. Now we need to make our way underneath here and then look out for a footpath that's going to take us out onto the estate. Ah, this is what I was looking for. Footpath to Alfred's Tower, two miles. Oh, what have we got here? The lower pump house, built in 1897. I'll put a photograph up of the information board. You can freeze it if you want to find out a bit more. But I can just about poke my camera through to have a look at the wheel there. Now there on the left, you can see a, a water wheel. And this is known as Turner's Paddock Water Wheel, I believe. And it dates to the 19th century. And it provided water to the village right up to the 1950s pumping it from uh, the lake and there was a water mill recorded around here in the Doomsday Book. And basically an earth dam had been built in 1754 between the Garden Lake and the Paddock Pond. It's called Turner's Paddock, well, it's named after J.M.W. Turner who painted the spot in 1799. <laughs>
tell you folks, the scenery around here really is quite stunning. And I can just about make out poking above the trees in the far distance, the top of Alfred's Tower, which is where we're heading for next. Oh, lovely. Listening to the birds twittering away. Well, looks like we've got a nice little shaded bit coming up, which is just what the doctor ordered. And there's a little sign here, or one of the way markers tells us that we're on the, the Star Valley Way, which of course is an old friend of ours, and we hopefully we'll be coming across the actual starting point of it later on in the walk. So, so peaceful in these woods. Lovely to see the, the fox gloves now out in full colour. It looks like this little area on my right is uh, mainly pine trees. And I can just hear silence. Oh, the odd bird, of course. <laughs> Now, I just stopped at this uh, signpost here. We're going to continue heading uh, straight on towards Alfred's Tower. But if you're interested in doing this walk and you're, you've got a thing about Iron Age hill forts, then if you follow the path to the right, it'll take you up to the Park Hill Camp, which is a sort of rectangular enclosure, about 2.3 hectares. And uh, it is a, an Iron Age hill fort. Uh, it's a, there's a rampart bank up to about 10 metres wide. 1.8 metres high and an outer ditch about 8 metres wide, 2 metres deep with a counter scarp bank and uh, I think there are entrances at the northwest and southeast side. Now normally I'd probably do a little detour and have a, an exploration around the fort and show you a bit of it but uh, just keeping an eye on the, the heat today I mean, the forecast is 22 degrees but I've got a feeling it might be a little bit hotter, so we've got to look after both myself and Logan. So we're going to carry on uh, towards Alfred's Tower, keeping in this shaded wood. You know, I think this is one of the loveliest bits of woodland that I've been through outside of the New Forest. It really is quite magical here. The only downside is that it's uphill all the way. At least when we get to the tower, I think it'll be downhill all the way back. Whew. We've made it to the, the top of the ridge. Actually, it wasn't too steep. Now, on our circular route, we're going to be heading eastwards but before we do that we're going to do a little detour to the west to check out that tower and there it is King Alfred's Tower it's actually a triangular folly designed by a chap called Henry Flitcroft for Sir Henry Hall II and it was completed in 1772 and it was originally uh, to commemorate the accession of King George III in 1760 and uh, the end of the Seven Years' War three years later. And it was erected near to the site of uh, Egbert Stone, where Alfred the Great, King of Wessex, rallied his Anglo-Saxons before they fought with the Danish at the Battle of Eddington, uh, just near Westbury in Wiltshire, in uh, AD 878. Although I should point out that some historians reckon Egbert Stone is at Kingston Deverell to the east of here. And the tower itself is uh, 161 foot high, although the information board says 162 foot, <laughs> uh, with a hollow centre. And uh, it's got a staircase in one of the corners. And I think it's got 
Well, some sources say 205 steps. The information board says 206 steps. <laughs> and it's got a statue of uh, King Alfred on it. And basically it straddles the Wiltshire Somerset border, which is around these parts. And I was reading that the, uh, the top 33 feet or so were damaged in 1944 when uh, it was hit by an aeroplane. Five American airmen were killed in the accident, sadly. But it certainly is a splendid tower, isn't it? And I believe that at uh, certain times of the year you can go inside and go up to the top. Imagine you should get some terrific views up there. Well, before I leave the tower, I'm going to see if I can find something called the Plague Stone. And I believe uh, it is tricky to find, so let's uh, see how we go. Ta-da! I've found it. This is the Plague Stone, or should I say Logan found it. It's quite uh, tricky to spot, actually. It's on the other side of the road from the tower and well hidden underneath some trees. And it is quite dark here, so hopefully you can see it. And they reckon it dates to around about 1350. And uh, you'll see there's a groove in the middle of it. And uh, that would have been filled with vinegar. And basically, uh, folk that had the plague around here, they would collect food from this spot. And they would make payment by putting coins in the pool of vinegar. And the vinegar obviously would disinfect the coins. Um, so it could be collected by the folk that dropped the food off. But terrific that it's still here. Well, I'm pleased I found that plague stone. Right, we're going to say goodbye to the tower and uh, initially going to start heading eastwards and then southwards downhill on the return journey. There is, uh, from what I can see, free car parking up here on the tower. So if you're going to do this walk and we're looking for free parking, maybe this would be a good place to start and end the walk. I see from an old 1901 map there used to be a couple of lodges up here, but I think they were demolished a, a long time ago. Definitely uh, time for a little water break. I don't come across too many free flowing streams on this walk so far, so important to make sure we're fully hydrated today for sure. A good lad. Well, it really is quite breathtaking uh, up on this ridge, wild flower meadow over on my right. Just past an information board, it tells me this is called Top Warren. And I'll put some photographs up from the information board and if you want to read more about it, you can freeze the screen and read at your leisure. We're making our way downhill through a rather alluring valley. And we can probably just see behind me over my left shoulder, a quite splendid structure. And it's called St Peter's Pump and it marks the source of the River Stour. And it's basically a water pump sitting on a grotto over a, a spring. And it dates from the 15th century but it originally stood between uh, Peter Street and Dolphin Street in Bristol. It was dismantled under a, an Act of Parliament in 1766. <laughs> Probably it had been an obstruction to traffic. And uh, Sir Henry managed to acquire it and bring it back and put it up here. And it really is the nominal source of the River Stour. There are several other springs to the west that also come off the hill and join up later on downstream. Of course, we know the Stour very well. And although it starts in Wiltshire, it's actually the longest river in Dorset and flows out to sea at Christchurch. It's 61 miles long. Although the well is here, the stream doesn't really appear above 
ground for another few hundred yards or so further down. Now you might remember earlier on in the video when we were inside the church and I pointed out to you the crest of the Stoughton family and uh, it had six wells on it. Well this area here is called Six Wells Bottom. I guess there must have been six wells at one time, I don't know. Well, <laughs> there is water up here. It's about, what, 50 yards away from uh, the official source, as it were. It's not flowing, but it is water. So uh, we can tick this off as another source bagged. Well, it doesn't take long for the River Star to become quite significant. Well, basically they've formed a uh, I'm guessing this must be an artificial lake here. Um, on the map it's called Lily Pond and sure enough it is absolutely brimful of lilies. Wow, how about this for an obelisk? Erected in 1839-1840 in Bathstone by Henry Hugh Hall, the third baronet, to replace an earlier one built of Chewmark stone by Henry Hall II in 1746 and it represents an Egyptian symbol of the ever shining sun. There was a further rebuild in 1853 after it had been hit by lightning and there's a memorial plaque from the original obelisk placed in 1815 by Colt Hall in memory of his grandfather. <laughs> And this is the quite uh, splendid Starhead House. I mentioned at the start that uh, Sir Henry Hall bought the estate in 1717 and he pulled down the old uh, Starton Castle Manor House and built this quite magnificent house and called it Starhead House. The gardens were later laid out uh, by the house between 1741 and 1780 by Sir Henry Hall II. But the house was gutted by a fire in 1902 and rebuilt in nearly identical style. I sort of have great admiration for people that can start off with a blank bit of paper and produce something like this. <laughs> oh, well, I've done it before. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's an inspiring building, isn't it? Yes. And do you finish it all off today or do oh, you yes. finish... An hour and a half. Oh, crumbs. Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. Fantastic. Cheating otherwise. <laughs> oh, no. oh super. Location. Well done. Yes. Well, we've completed our circular walk, but before we pop into the pub for research purposes for the video, of course, um, I'm going to use my National Trust card and have a quick look round the gardens. We'll have a very short tour because we are quite warm. And say so some of the, uh, the scenery in these gardens. It's going to be very difficult to uh, put words to some of the pictures. Really are quite uh, well, stunning. Is the only word that springs to mind. I say some of the buildings and statues and what have you here really add to the magic of it. And look up on the hill there. Is that the Temple of Apollo? I think. I think the best thing for me to do is to shut up and just put some of this footage with some pleasant music and you can enjoy.
Well, folks, we've made it to the pub, but unfortunately, it doesn't open on Tuesdays. And today is a Tuesday. But fortunately, they've got a cafe, so I've got a ginger beer and they sell dog ice cream. I think we could be here for a little while. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We thought we'd do the end scene here by the lake in the uh, quite tranquil setting of Stourhead Gardens. Weather today has been fantastic. It's been a hot one, but been worth it. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.